Anna Bolles and welcome to Fenextra TV. We're here at Money 2020 Europe and joining me now in the press lounge is Michelle Rawks from the Cambridge Centre of Alternative Finance and we're going to be talking about DLT and crypto. Michelle, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Um, but coming to DLT first, could you sort of set the scene for us and tell us essentially what it is? That is a really great question because essentially the term has completely lost its meaning, just like <laughs> blockchain. Um, but essentially you can summarize it into two main categories if you like. So the first one is what it was uh, initially intended to be. So what we call multi-party consensus systems, which means you have multiple entities that do not necessarily trust each other, reach agreement over a shared set of data without having a central authority coordinating all of that. Now the other thing, and that's actually the vast majority of blockchain projects today, uh, is what we call the blockchain meme which means essentially they use blockchain as a concept or narrative or a catalyst essentially for mostly modernization and digitizing uh, legacy infrastructure and agreeing on common data standards. So they might use some of the component technologies like some cryptography like digital signatures and so on, but it has very little to do with what blockchain essentially what it's supposed to do. And that's absolutely fine, but the problem is by calling it DLT or blockchain, it just creates additional confusion about what blockchain actually is, and then also what it actually can do. Um, so the action error uh, use case is actually a lot narrower than generally portrays. All right, and following up on that quite nicely then, what can it do? What, is, what potential does it hold? So I would say Bitcoin is still the best example. So creating a synthetic digital commodity uh, that is not controlled by any party. Um, so a bit like a, a physical commodity like gold, um, just in a digital space and having an integrated value transfer system so you can trustlessly uh, send it from one person to another without third party interference so nobody can block that transfer. Um, and so far all the other projects we've seen they try to do the same thing with computations like Ethereum, with file storage and so on. Um, but the only thing that actually works right now and is really being used is payments and monetary instruments. Um, all right, pretty complicated stuff. Um, but where does regulation fit into all of this? What sort of regulatory frameworks are we seeing right. as a result? So we have these uh, public blockchains and the crypto assets that we just talked about. And then the other side, these multi-party consensus systems, more like federated business networks. And so those operate in traditional uh, regulated environments. So there's really not much that you need uh, to essentially add in new terms uh, when it comes to regulation. Now, where it gets really interesting is obviously the crypto assets. So if they work as designed, you can't regulate them, at least at the base layer. But what you can regulate are the centralized interfaces into these layers, and those are the service providers like exchanges, wallets, payment service providers. And actually most people are not using the crypto assets directly, so on chain, but they go through these centralized service providers. And that is exactly where regulation can step in. Fascinating. And you're running some research at the Cambridge Center of Alternative Finance. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that and where it's sort of heading? Uh, right, so we cover essentially the entire space, so public blockchains, enterprise blockchains, and what we do is we reach out to ecosystem actors, so it could be exchanges, wallets, and so forth, miners as well, but also central banks and policymakers, uh, and then we collect data directly from them, which we then combine with publicly available data sources to essentially provide really an empirical picture of the ecosystem, so an evidence-based, fact-based uh, overview uh, over the ecosystem as a whole. Fascinating. Well. Michelle, it's been great talking to you. I've certainly learned quite a lot. Um, I'll let you get back out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching.